Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane. For those who are new, welcome back if you're returning. We are covering the second half of News Nation's interview with JP Miller, as well as one of Micah's sisters coming out, allegedly saying JP said quite a few lies in his interview. Richard McHugh, the reporter who is interviewing JP Miller, had just finished asking about JP Miller admitting that he tried to raise Micah from the dead. JP Miller got up for church, had his sermon prepared, but he waited until the end of his sermon to announce his wife's passing. After doing so, he dismissed the church but asked everyone to remain quiet and to not discuss what he said. And that was actually intentional because the last thing I wanted to hear was people talking about my wife. I wanted them to go and take it to Jesus before they start, you know, doing what some Christians like to do and just chatter, chatter, chatter. And I didn't want to experience the extra pain. I didn't want to be mad at somebody in my church because I heard them say, well, you know, I'm not even going to guess at what somebody could have said, but I didn't want anybody to say anything negative about my wife. I'm not sure what he thought the difference would be between the church finding out a different way versus him telling them to remain quiet about it. People are going to talk either way, especially if the pastor's wife just commits suicide. Another point of concern, let's say, for people watching was you, when you, you gave a eulogy with something concerned, people said that was concerning that you said that you tried to raise Micah from the dead. And I, I believe at another point you said you laid next to her body in the morgue. Is that true? I didn't lay next to her body. I mean, I laid, uh, I, I couldn't, you can't lay next to her because she's, this, her body's up on this thing, but I mean, I hugged her and um, I sat on the floor, you know, next to her and just talked to her for a while. Um, but yeah, I tried raising her from the dead because you know what? If it had worked, we'd have a whole different story, but God forbid me not try it and always wonder the rest of my life, would it have worked? Right? Jesus did it, Elisha did it, a few other people in the Bible, and so, um, yes, if, if somebody I love more than anything in the world has passed away what I believe to be an early death, you better believe I'm going to try to, in Jesus' name, raise them from the dead. I believe in healing, I believe in miracles, I believe in the raising of the dead. I'm a one God, apostolic, tongue talking, holy, rolling, born again, heaven bound believer in the liberated power of Jesus' name. I'm not ashamed of it. <laughs> Got whiplash from that. That's a little wild, but again, I, I don't try to judge anybody on their grieving. I guess as a religious leader, um, attempting to raise somebody from the dead, I mean, it's a little wild. We're gonna get into uh, Richard McHugh's thoughts about the interview with JP um, toward the end of the video as well. And if I recall in the first part of the interview, he said that he laid with Micah in the morgue at least four times. But again, not laid because she's up on a steel gurney would you characterize your relationship with micah as healthy <laughs> oh man we had when she was on her medicine we had the greatest marriage you could ever imagine we spent every day together i don't know any other couple that spent every day so we wake up well she'd kind of wake up before me but you know we'd go to, we'd go work out together every day five days a week we'd eat lunch together every day we would work together every day We'd pick up the kids, just over the kids every day. We'd go to dinner every night together. Then every night we would have our routine. So there's three things we would do. We would either sit in the bathtub together for two hours until the water went from steaming hot to ice cold. She bought this um, big air mattress we'd put in the back of the truck and we'd go park somewhere here in Myrtle Beach where there's no lights. And we'd, she'd bring us some hot chocolate and we'd lay on the air mattress for two hours. Or we would go out on the beach with our beach blanket and lay there for two hours. But the point was no cell phones, just her and I she would talk 90% of the time. I would talk 10% of the time and I would just listen. And so every night, two hours, we'd hang out together. And so was our marriage healthy? It's probably as healthy as any other American marriage. Before we get into the next question, he's uh, romanticizing their relationship. He's saying, oh, it's an average relationship, but you know, we always go out and bring out the air mattress and we have romantic date nights and that could probably be easily disproven. And what is this reoccurring comment about people talking a lot, Christians talking a lot, or you know how they are, they talk some, talk among themselves, women talk. There are so many clips I've seen of JP commenting on people talking too much. Just something I keep noticing that's sort of in the back of my head to keep looking out for. The interviewer goes on to ask a pretty direct question. Have you ever abused your wife? Never, not once in any way, shape or form. I took better care of her than anybody could ever take care of her. Um, I never made her 
asked her to clean the house not once in seven years of marriage. She never had to cook a single meal. She never had to work. She was never harmed physically in any way. Oh, I also want to mention he says that they work together all the time. I don't believe JP worked at the restaurant that Micah worked at, so I don't see how they're working together five days a week. But anyway. In a letter or in an email you wrote to Micah, you apologized, yes. right? You apologized for hiring, for tracking her, for uh, messing with her tires, for posting the picture. Um, so that's all true, right? So if you I wanted, if I, great question. I'm so glad you asked that actually. If I wanted to lie about that, I would just say I never wrote the letter, right? Because how can you prove that I wrote somebody a letter? There's no signature, there's no name, it's not in my handwriting. I 100% wrote the letter and I did it because the night that she was with me, the last night we were together for four hours, at one point, because the whole four hours I'm trying to get her to take her medicine. And then she's saying, my family doesn't want me to. They don't want me to come inside the house. Said, Maybe it's your house. Come inside. So if I finally get to the point, she says, you know what? Um, I'll take my medicine and I'll come home. Naturally, him and Micah would be the only ones there. So nobody could say this didn't or did happen because the other person is no longer here. If you'll give me $10,000 and if you'll um, write me an apology letter. So let me understand can. this correctly. The letter, that, the email that you wrote to Micah apologizing for uh, hiring a PI, tracking her, uh, messing with her tires, uh, and posting a, a topless photo of her. You wrote that, you say. Yes, but sir. But now you're saying that you di didn't actually do these things. I did the PI thing, um, but so over the years what I, I've learned with her is when she's in a delusional state of mind, I have to play into it in order to get her to get her back on medicine. So the first year or two when she'd say something, I'd say, that's not true, that's not real. She'd get mad and blow up and, you know, knock a hole in the wall or something like that. Oh, so feed into her delusion. Perfect. So then by December, December 2019, I think it was, she, um, we were watching TV and she just stopped and said, you're a double agent. And I said, no, I'm not. She says, yes, you are. She said, and I'm going to call the police. She said, you're a double agent. You've stolen my things. And, um... And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you in jail. I don't think Micah's paranoia was as bad as JP is trying to make us believe, but I believe she might have been at least somewhat scared because the girl is being tracked, and even here JP is reiterating that he did hire a PI. And I was like, oh my goodness, what I'll do? She hadn't been taking her medicine. So just to be clear, you wrote this to Micah, but now you're saying you didn't do those things. No, I did not slash the tire. I did not. There was, no, I don't think there's a naked picture of her anywhere, ever. Anyway, I think that was just a made-up thing. And I think that her tire just got something ran over from what I understand. I don't know. I didn't see anything. I can't wait to get into what Micah's sister has to say about this interview. So I'm trying to keep my own commentary as, at a minimum because I think this guy is full of baloney. Um, but I did hire the PI before. I did everything I could to stop her from getting a weapon. Everything you can imagine. I hired a private eye and I said, uh, try, put a tracker on her car. And if she gets anywhere near a gun store, <clears throat> please let me know. Um, I, did, I did everything I could think of. <clears throat> and... Um, did, they, did that private eye alert you she never, that oh, day? No, I had stopped paying for it about three weeks beforehand, four weeks beforehand. How convenient. Why? Um, running out of money and um, people telling me that she was totally fine and I'm wasting my time. So what do you say to the doubters and critics who say you drove her to suicide? That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. She, she, <laughs> so wait, wait, she wasn't with me. Because listen, with me, she didn't commit suicide. Apart from me for three months and with her family, she did commit suicide. One of the last things she showed me, she showed me a book she's reading called, I Love Jesus, But I Want to Die. And I said, why do you want to die? She said, because I can't come home because my family won't let me. That's what I say to them. But, uh, oh, it doesn't work like that, but okay. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. What's tripping you up? Just, being able to tell, just being able to talk about everything. It feels like um, that, uh, you know, people don't care to hear uh, the truth. They just um, they just want to go off a of feeling. He has a little bit of uh, moisture in the corner of his eye, but that could just be, you know, he he is getting his eyes to water. It's sad. He's stressed out, anxious. His reputation is on the line. But he just wiped both sides of his nose, and there were no tears running. They just want to go off a of feeling. There's no tear. There's no tear. You didn't wipe anything away. Do you feel that you did anything that you would change? Do you feel any part responsible? God, that's a great question. <clears throat> Man, that's such a good question. <clears throat> Stalling. <clears throat> wow, what a good question. Can I have a second to think about it? Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's such a good question. What would I do differently? Oh, man. Uh, oh, I know what I'd do. 
I know what I do. I know what I do. I would not involve her family when she's having mental episodes and is uh, schizophrenic and, you know, is, is off, off, off her meds. I would never have texted them. I know what I would do. I would point the finger at everybody else. Which is what he's been doing this entire time. We've seen you dressed as Spider-Man in videos. Okay, let me just, wait, wait, hold on. I'm not Spider-Man. In your I can either confirm nor deny. To me, it says Spider-Man as the, as the person who's texting me. So we've seen you in videos dressed as Spider-Man. We know there's a Spider-Man character in your back, the back of your house somewhere. Um, her family says, wonders if you have um, identity issues uh, and this need to align with superheroes. What's, what's your reaction? What, what, and what's the reason for the Spider-Man? Well, first of all, I can neither confirm nor deny that I've ever put on a Spider-Man costume. <laughs> But you'll never see me in the same room with Spider-Man, I will say that. Oh my gosh, in my opinion, he's a Looney Tune. And I don't know, people say stuff. Me and Micah would go You're to- not, you, So you don't get in a Spider-Man costume? Yeah. I mean, you just sent me a picture with yeah, you and so Spider-Man. Me and Micah, we'd go to Comic-Cons every year. We both dress up. Micah dressed up more than I did, actually. There are times I didn't dress up and she did. We love that kind of stuff. She would do, she was Wonder Woman, she was Spider-Woman, she was um, Mystique, she was, um, she was a lot of different characters. So you're not even going to grant that it's that there's something odd here. No, I'm not. No. I I, I put on the Spider-Man costume. I go see handicapped children. I'll, I'll go visit kids that you know love comic books and that are handicapped, and I'll um, pretend like I'm Spider-Man and I'll take them a comic book and um, do videos with them and stuff like that. One of the videos that has surfaced recently is from years ago and I, I'm sure you know what it is it's you're sitting face down on the ground and you're freaking out and you're you're talking about you're literally squealing about eat, being eaten by ants don't you worry I'm going to pull up that video right now it's a doozy it's makes me go crazy is somebody helping you oh okay Okay, but you got Mark coming. <laughs> oh my goodness! Ants. Um, <coughs> taking the wrong meds that you missed your family. <laughs> I mean, for viewers, for people watching it, the, the the common thought is, what is going on here, and do you have a drug problem? No, <laughs> so. Um, I fell out of a tree, a giant magnolia tree. It was like 300 years old. I broke 12 bones. It was 10, 10 to 12 bones. I don't know if you count fingers. He just mentioned a magnolia tree. Let me allow him to explain the story with the tree, but then I'm going to come right back to you. Count fingers. Yeah, it was count fingers. Anyway, I have all this metal in my body, and um, I'd never taken pain meds in my life, and I just had my body cast taken off, um, and so I took a little bit too much pain meds that day. You know what's really strange? Allison, JP's ex-wife, filed a police report, and you just tell me what you think down below. Allegedly, when Allison moved away, JP had moved into a home that was across the pond from her, and the only thing blocking JP's view from Allison, allegedly, was a tree. Allison told police she was concerned about JP entering her home when she wasn't there. A few months earlier, Allison's father found JP lying in the yard of her residence when she was not home. He appeared to be under the influence, but refused medical treatment and suggested he had mixed up his medication. Allison also told police that JP had moved into the residence across the pond from her house, which allowed him to monitor her movements and continue harassing her. He repeatedly called and texted her. He could see her coming and going and when she had company. The only thing partially blocking John Paul's view of Allison's house was a magnolia tree owned by the Homeowners Association. Allegedly, Allison told police that she had seen a white substance on the ground surrounding the trunk of this tree, and she believed John Paul was trying to kill the tree with salt. According to Allison, she had seen him using this technique to kill trees on church property. Although Allison told police she did not fear for 
for her safety. She described the stalking and harassment as continuous. She planned to discuss trespass notices with her manager at work and her pastor at church and was referred to her attorney to seek an order of protection. Three months later, Allison again contacted police when JP shone a green laser into her residence from his home across the pond. She documented the intrusion with a video. Oh, is that video available? Because I would really love to see that. Police advised her to turn the video over to her attorney. Oh, I would love it to come to surface, I think, right now. Because everything is still active, we're not going to see it for a little while, if ever. JP was not charged in connection with any of the incidents referred to in these police reports. And currently, he's still not being charged for anything. That's it. That's Just it. what? Broke a set? I don't remember any of them. It was 2017, 16? 16. 2016. 2016. And um, yeah, it was like 10 years ago, eight years ago, whatever. And um, and I was missing my family. My, my wife, my, Micah, and I, we started through an affair. And so we were both married to people. And then we, you know, we got divorced. And I was missing my my family because I'd lost my, you know, family at the time. And um, and I was on pain meds and it just all just went together. But fell out of a tree, broke a bunch of bones, took too many pain meds. And that was that story. Not hallucinogenics. No. What, is a, what would hallucinogenic be? Make you hallucinate. Well, what makes you hallucinate? Drugs. Like illegal drugs? Hallucinogenic drugs, yeah. Oh, I Why is he playing si Oh, come on. You know... Oh, I've never done a legal drug my whole life. Okay. Oh! Oh, crap. That was a lie. I'm sorry. That was a lie. Um, I, when, when I was 16 years old, one time I was in a truck with two of my friends, and they were both smoking pot. I didn't smoke any, but they do a thing called hot box. And so I got some of that. And I, I tried steroids one time. Okay, so he went on a burn cruise and he's tried steroids one time, allegedly. That's pretty much all I have for that interview. I want to get into what Micah's sister has to say. Rich McHugh, who conducted uh, both the interviews with Pastor John Paul Miller and with Micah Miller. I mean, they're in mourning. They've lost her. She, she took her own life and it's been just sort of a devastating a uh, series of weeks for them, but they seem very, very laser focused on a mission. Is that the sense that you got from them, that they have a plan? A hundred percent, actually. They are, they have not changed since I've, I've met them, which is since this happened. They are laser focused, they are united, they talk daily as a family. Everything goes through a decision process. They're, they're united front and they extend that, I believe, to Regina, their attorney. They want to get justice for their sister. They want the, 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 her story to get out. They want, they're doing this to help other people so this doesn't happen to other people. But they also just want the truth out. They don't want this uh, kind of hanging over them and, and her sister's legacy. For those who mm -hmm. didn't see it, the best way to characterize it is just Bizarro. I mean, just he, he just he seemed to cry at the drop of a hat, and crying seemed to be a central theme of the interview. Do I have that right? Uh, One thousand percent, Ashley. I, you know, I've done uh, uh, over a thousand, two thousand interviews in my in my career, and this was easily the craziest interview I've ever been a part of. The energy was like it was like being on a roller coaster. Uh, I didn't know where where we were going. Like I would ask him a simple question and all of a sudden it would elicit a response like we just saw. I said, why did you stop the private eye? Why did you stop, you know, why didn't you know where she was the day that, that she died? He said, oh, I stopped because I ran out of money. And so we moved on and after the interview, he texted me, he said, I'm sorry, I lied. I'm so sorry, I, that was not the real reason. Did he end up giving the real reason when he texted him? So this was like an all day thing and uh, it just, it was all over the map. When he started crying, did that feel like that was authentic to you? As someone who attended Solid Rock for many years, he cried on stage almost every other Sunday. And I would invite friends to come with me because, you know, I believe everyone should hear the word. And they, my friends would call it out and say, that was the fakest cry I've ever seen. And at first I was, almost going to defend John Paul. And then whenever I started seeing it over and over again, people started pointing out all of his fake cries, then I just became numb to it. And then, you know, obviously stopped going to the church, but 
he's just kind of known for doing that. I thought it was a pretty bad idea for him to go on the media tour. I think the only reason that he did is because he started hearing rumors of him being too quiet, so maybe thought it made him look suspicious. The only problem is the more he talks, the more evidence they have to use in case he contradicts himself. This part of the interview is when they're talking about JP saying that him and Micah were trying to work things out. They were doing these romantic dinner. She didn't have to cook. She didn't have to clean. Our family does have evidence that the last time they had any interaction was in close proximity with each other. Um, it was the complete opposite of what he's saying it's, it, it was. Um, they did not kiss. They did not hug. They did not talk about getting back together. And so this is what Regina has to say about JP talking and going on this media tour and what might be used in court against him. As far as the email and him saying that, you know, it was, we, we're all referring to it as the apology letter. He's spinning it just like he does with everything. Um, he's, he's been caught, okay, and now it's like, oh, how can I, how can I explain away? Because he always explain away, explains away everything. In that, if asking for that letter, why would he just lie and just say he did all these things to get her back on, on medication? She had been off of that medication for months. So this is the interviewer showing the girls the video of JP showing up at the Honda dealership where Micah was getting her tires fixed. It looked like he just got out of bed or something. I don't know. Um, he, it, was, it was apparent that she was being tracked back then because he just showed up out of nowhere without her telling him where she was, and that happened multiple times. Um, he was, again, trying to control, embarrass her, and so she has to call the police and say, I didn't want him, I don't want him here, and he just shouts things at her to get a rise out of her, just like he would in his interview, say things towards the family to try to get a rise out of us. And she rose above that, and so is our family. We're going to rise above um, the things that he's trying to put out there that are not true. It absolutely is evidence of abuse. And when Micah brought it to me and gave it to me, I was like, thank goodness that she, that she got that. I wish it would have been longer, but she wasn't expecting him. So when she's trying to fumble around and get it going, and man, the minute that he saw that she got that going, that's when he's turning around to, to walk away. And I'm so grateful that she did get that. So that is the interview with Anna and Regina and JP Miller's interview with News Nation. There is a lot to unpack there. Please let me know what you think below and I'll see you in my next one.